myself Anoop Inder Kaur and I'm a clinical psychologist practicing in Tri-City. Uh, today we are here with uh, Dr. S.K. Bansal. Uh, sir is 74 years old. He has been practicing medicine and neurology for last 52 years. Now Dr. Bansal has written a book which is titled as Mind, Brain and Mind Intricacies Unplugged. Uh, so to begin with sir, welcome and thank you so much for writing this book for our readers. I would now request you to please introduce yourself and tell us more about you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you, Dr. Noob. Thanks, Yuvraj. See, the topic is uh, surely very, very interesting, but at the same time, it's a very difficult topic. To unplug the intricacies of brain and mind, we are continuing maybe for centuries, decades, and it is continuing right now also, despite of uh, real, real, burgeoning uh, information every day, every minute, as far as all these things are concerned, the intricacies of the brain is concerned, the human being is concerned, the relationship and other things are concerned. And uh, writing this uh, script was uh, something uh, of my passion, but uh, a sort of a challenge also. Uh, and especially so, once uh, it has been written with the uh, reader's perspective. To tell you my journey in short, I must say that I'm from uh, Northwest India and I'm from basically agriculturist uh, landlord family. Uh, in my initial school career, I was uh, in a very simple uh, schooling and uh, after doing the higher secondary. But one thing was very uh, clear that from the very beginning, I was a deep thinker. I was having some passion, compassion. I always wanted to know the things in depth. For example, uh, maybe in this, uh, whether I was in the sixth standard, so I was interested in astronomy. So why all these things are there? What what sort of the all these stars, Milky Ways, black holes, and all that thing? So that possibly resulted uh, slowly and slowly some interest in uh, doing the things in a, a better way. So slowly that just led me to the, uh, learning medicine because medicine is such a subject which have, one has to be thorough. Because my, my philosophy is that uh, the type of percentage or the past percentage is 50%. I don't uh, really agree with that. And I, so uh, slowly and slowly I developed uh, passion uh, by virtue of my deep thinking and knowing the things much in a better way. So th that landed me into the learning of medicine. Medicine is surely a very challenging subject in which I, I felt that the, uh, one has to know each and everything because I have to provide the best to my patient. The philosophy of 50% uh, being the past percentage in majority of the medical schools world over, that didn't uh, suit me to my, my thinking. So I thought that uh, better is in the way the Americans are going, uh, uh, take, take out the best possible at a given time. That's what is known as percentile system. Because otherwise taking 50% past percentage, does it mean that 50% uh, if you are not known to that particular subject is uh, uh, you, you are licensed uh, not to give good medicine to the patient. So that's why I wanted to be thorough. You can say in a way little uh, compassion or maybe little obsession also. So in that way, I was continuing and ultimately landed into the medical school. Uh, during my medical school, uh, of course, my habit remains the same, rather my passion, compassion and uh, to a little extent obsession increased. I wanted to know more and more. And in that process, once the, in the initial year of my medical graduation, I was uh, taking care of the physiology and anatomy of that of the body. I think both the things are very important because this is going to be asked, asked about this book also. It's just like the, the structure and the function to know the function in a thorough way, to know the disease in the thorough way. We have to know the cause also, and the cause lies into the structure. There may be some problem in the function also, but unless there is a structure, there is no uh, function. So unless there is a human being, so where there is a function. So that's why I was very good as far as the physiology is concerned. I got a gold medal. I was given MBBS honors. And in addition to that, I had four silver medals in various subjects. And the passion continued and I came to the best medical uh, postgraduate uh, uh, medical university 
in the name of uh, PGIMER, the Postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research, which is uh, in Northwest India and Chandigarh and directly placed under the Parliament of India. So there is a national competition. So I made it and ultimately got into general medicine. I qualified uh, uh, general medicine post graduation. And during this period, that was a time when it was from 1971 to 1974 or 75. During this period, uh, somehow, because I know the uh, developed countries, there is a, definitely there are more areas or areas of opportunities and one can uh, complete one's own uh, um, wishes or maybe the research or the various kind of know-how which is better available over there. So I passed out the ESFMG, which is the American exam from Pennsylvania in 1974 and got immigration also. But somehow I continued over here. And uh, during that period, uh, uh, I, I wrote uh, medical uh, this papers also, some uh, articles in the books also, medical books of course. And uh, but uh, during this period, somehow, by virtue of my wife being medical graduate, I landed in uh, hill state of uh, India, that is Himachal Pradesh. Over there, I was more linked with the uh, our uh, public health, national public health services. So that was the time when uh, I landed into the uh, family planning programs, uh, taking care of uh, national malaria eradication programs, smallpox. Uh, eradication program, po post polio uh, eradication programs and all, all sort of things and the school health also. So this was a very good experience uh, that was at the grassroots level as to the medical services is concerned that was the tertiary level not even that I used to go uh, uh, all the way um, on foot uphill uh, to a school let's say 15 kilometer distance for the school health that, that, that was a lot of learning process as well as because what is happening exactly at the grassroots level. That, that was always a, a sort of inquisitiveness for me. But somehow, because I wanted to continue uh, in science and wanted to know more and more about uh, the intricacies uh, of the uh, human uh, brain system or in the which way there is a interpersonal relations, why there is a, some sort of discrepancy, why there is a agony, why there is a deception, why there the people are not living uh, uh, at cool why there is a problem in the interpersonal relation. So in, in that sort of uh, uh, analogy or aspirations, I opted neurology or uh, neurosciences and uh, continued my interest in uh, neurology, behavior, behavior uh, neurology, as well as neuroelectrophysiology. So in the way the brain works, see in the, the, the taking care of all the way, in the way the perception is being done from the eyes to the brain, from the ears, to the brain or from the various areas of the body to the brain because perception is one of the very important which is going to play a pivotal role as far as the brain function is concerned so is the constitution of that of the mind. So I did my uh, postdoctoral degree in uh, um, neurology and during this period uh, I was also uh, um, decorated with the fellowship by the WHO World Health Organization and in uh, uh, during that uh, time, I went to the best federal government hospital, National Institute of Health in Maryland. So I, I worked on the human motor control system and uh, in which way, because this is again is one of, one of, one of the very important thing. Because the movement is what is the life is. The human motor control system is one of the very important thing in uh, transformation is concerned, uh, transforming from one to another place. And the way I am speaking, this is again a sort of uh, human motor control system. My body language is again that same sort of thing. So coming back uh, ultimately, uh, uh, taking uh, into faculty as associate professor, I taught uh, to the um, medical student of various level. I, I think I taught as well as learned, both from uh, those persons who, do, who were doing their uh, post-graduation, post-doctoral uh, degree in general medicine, in pediatrics, in psychiatry, in neurology, in neurosurgery. Uh, so uh, the, the, that was uh, as far as that uh, particular thing is concerned. So uh, what I feel, uh, I, I was one of the member, uh, the uh, member who started this Indian Academy of Neurology in India, which separated from Indian Association of Neurology long back. 
right? And thereafter, they offered me fellowship for Indian Academy of uh, Neurology as well. So during this period, I wrote about uh, 40 uh, uh, these uh, articles, scientific articles, some chapters also in uh, journals of uh, importance at the national level, at the international level, and presented these papers also to a uh, good good limit. So the, the, that's what was. But I continued, and uh, my my passion also continued. And thereafter, I came to the private sector. So the private sector, I was again very keen. Somehow, uh, being a uh, you can say a hardcore professional, committed more in RD. So I was uh, in private sector, but at the same time, I was doing neuroelectrophysiology. Very interestingly, I am doing this neuroelectrophysiology, EMG, nerve conduction studies, evoke potential conduction across the uh, uh, auditory pathways, visual pathways, with deep interest for the last forty years. So that made me more uh, rather uh, has some more inquisitiveness how our uh, uh, system is working how the electrical potential how the same potential becomes touch how the same potential becomes pressure pain and uh, so many other things it's all going to the brain in which way the brain perceives that sometimes the brain depending upon the attention concentration depending upon the personality or the outlook there are different type of perception they vary also from the person to person and that the same thing i saw in my patients also in the patient uh, care, as far as the doctor is concerned, what is supposed to be, and otherwise that is my practice, uh, this uh, experience as well. We have to take, uh, take each and every uh, patient as an individual. As, let's say if there are uh, 100 patients, let's say of a recent uh, episode, Corona. So all the 100 per, uh, patient is going to behave differently by virtue of uh, maybe morbid, uh, uh, comorbid conditions, by virtue of age, gender, lifestyles, or uh, so many other things. So that's why, uh, because the each and every person is to be taken in a different way, and there was a lot of uh, uh, number of population, they used to come to me. Because as far as uh, our country is concerned, India is concerned, it's a developing country, and people really really don't know big difference as far as the psychiatry, psych psychology, and uh, neurology, and neurosurgery is concerned, or behavior neurology is concerned. So there are a good number of persons of uh, uh, psychological problem, they used to come to me. At the same time, they were youngsters having different type of problems. So I thought of it and over the years, uh, we, along with the, uh, rather I'll say I, along with the ever increasing uh, scientific tools, communication system and other things. You see, uh, talk of uh, my first uh, PC was uh, uh, the uh, costing big, mon big money. It was 382 MB. But now you see there are terabytes and tetrabytes and whatnot. So I'll say there is a lot of exodus as where the information is concerned, communication is concerned, or your interpersonal relationship is concerned. So you see, I feel that's what, what my own experience also, large experience of 52 years, that there is pros and cons for every everything. So same is too as far as uh, I'll say my patient care is concerned, uh, as with the information technology in the way it has come in the way the people are going on, in the way the youngsters, uh, they are taking up the things, in the way the female population is coming up and they are being decorated justifiably. Uh, so th 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 that's what I feel. But there are some uh, usefulness and some to be becoming, uh, let's say, becoming independent in various aspects of life, may it be the money power, muscle power, physical power, or maybe gender power. So uh, I'll say that uh, in all those situations, there is a usefulness. Undoubtedly, there is a usefulness. But at the same time, there are some uh, hiccups also. So I, I thought that uh, the, uh, somehow the, there are a lot many things. There are youngsters full of knowledge, I'll tell you, because they are having uh, a lot of opportunities available to them compared to what we were doing. They could, they could see, they could read the things actually happening. Let's say in YouTube, they can see in which way the heart is working, in which way the sounds are being created. So that was not the scenario when we did our uh, medical graduation. So despite of uh, the youngsters uh, just bubbling with the knowledge, and uh, I'll say uh, they used uh, definitely they used to walk extra mile to know the things in much a better way compared to what it used to be 30 years, 40 years, 50 years before. But at the same time, as far as the cons are concerned, talking about pros, there are so many, undoubtedly, in the way there is an endless list. But the cons is also there. This has created isolation. 
too much of independence is uh, isolation. So, truly speaking, we are not uh, born isolated. We are not living isolated because ultimately the we take birth for some sort of cause, for some sort of reasons and uh, we land up into a relationship. The relationship start with the parents, with the then peer group, then with the teachers and then after acquiring the uh, reasonable amount of uh, qualification, then getting into commercialism, we try to earn money. Again, there is a relationship as far as the society is concerned, the groups are concerned, corporates are concerned, self-employment is concerned. So then slowly and slowly the, the th things keeps on working and taking its shapes. But during this period I have seen that despite of having so many things uh, uh, they have cap uh, captured or uh, gathered, still they are not adequate, they are inadequate. I have seen youngsters, they are having one or the other problem. They do not know, you see, they are having full of uh, uh, things that are available to them at the click of button, full of, uh, you see, you search one, one thing in the uh, search engine, there may be thousand uh, uh, answers available, but which is to be uh, chosen, in which way to be chosen, which is necessary for A person, which is necessary for B, C or D, because all of us in the way I have told, we are different person, our requirement is different, data is too much, but we have to ultimately find it, what is the best possible for a given person. So that was required because that's what I saw as uh, we were talking with the uh, various person, youngsters, male, female at uh, various ages. Uh, then I, I came to know that they are having different type of problems. But the topic may be same, the extent, the quantum or the diversity is surely different. So then I came with the idea that uh, I should write a book and uh, um, this book uh, was little challenging but at the same time this is linked with my profession and my experience uh, as well as uh, my interest, passion and uh, that's what it is. Uh, it's a long uh, route um, It's a, uh, of my long journey of 74 years age and 52 years experience in medicine. And this experience is of course there in the national institutes like uh, in PGI in India, like uh, uh, in the federal government best institute, National Institute of Health America and other good institutes. So that's where I am today. Well, uh, sir, thank you so much. First of all, I think our readers can uh, pretty much, they can analyze how much your contribution to the society and the medicine field has been. 52 years is a very, very long time and sir, the way sir was explaining everything and I think sir, it's very inspiring for the beginners like us. For uh, me, I was thinking whether I'll be able to do so much, uh, you know, contribution to the society or not. But clearly sir, this book is the outcome of your passion, compassion, uh, your wisdom and those 52 years of experience. Right. So, um, readers and myself, we want to know a little more about the contents, what we can learn from your experience, what contents you have covered in this book and also the logistics behind your write-up, sir. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, it's good. The logistic is just uh, to share my own experience. The experience is very, I am, uh, you can say, a drop of water in the ocean. The consciousness, the uh, quantum of experience available is uh, never ending. It was there, it is there, it is increasing every day, every hour, every minute, I will say even second in the way the things are going on. So uh, the main logistic was in which way I can uh, put my best experience uh, uh, into black and white uh, to the so that it reached to the persons in a simplified way, in a logical way. And uh, it's nothing like uh, a buffet served in a nice way in a uh, great ambience of a hotel or a restaurant. Surely, because I see uh, whatsoever I have written, my objective being more like a self-help uh, data from whatsoever the readers read from the reader's perspective to a little from the uh, my own experience, the writer's perspective also. I feel that uh, there should be a lot more to have carry home. Somebody asked me, is this a casual uh, reading? It is not. The casual, uh, I feel that most of the books, in case we are going to talk of the self-help books, they are more like a casual reading. 
or maybe slight uh, attention concentration is required for them. And I did talk to one of the person, casual reading means uh, taken casually, read casually and um, uh, not uh, uh, to, to, uh, whatsoever is written in the depth of uh, its substance and to practice it because learning is okay, but to practice is more important. So I always say to become coach is good, it's very easy, but to become a good player is very important. So from this book I want that you should be a good coach and you must be a good player also because unless you are a player, unless you are going to implement what is uh, written to a reasonable extent, of course, to your individual, individualistic level in the, which, in the way I have written, it is not going to be that meaningful because what has been seen already that all those books which are self-help groups, they are more like addictive. A person who reads the book feels good, feels satisfied and wants to buy another book, self-help group and yet third group, four, uh, four, fourth book. So in, in the way, in that way, it's more like an addiction to those particular type of books. So my idea is not to give you uh, a ready-made thing. I am, uh, as far as this book is concerned, I am giving uh, the contents in such a way from the formation of uh, that of the brain, the functioning of the brain, so, uh, so that ultimately you choose what is the best for you. See, I'll quote over here, a script or the philosophy of Lord Buddha. Somebody asked what is uh, good for me. Lord Buddha said, you see, you have to decide yourself. Each one have to, uh, you decide yourself. He, he gave an example of a musical instrument having one string. So he said, if the string is too tight, it will break. It is, in, in case it's too loose, it's not going to create nice rhythm. And what is uh, good or what is bad, what is tight or what is loose is depends upon you. You have to decide your own rhythm. You have to make the best out of it. The material is there, the ingredients is there. You have to find the, what is the best recipe which suits you. Somehow you see, the, it, the things keeps on changing. The things keeps on ch changing. This world is never same. Even the next moment is not there. They are going to be the, the past moment. Same holds true as far as you, me, all of us are concerned. Same is true as far as the recipe is concerned. Same is true as far as the taste is concerned. You see, I will say the meaning of, let us say, love. I love you. Say, said This same word which has been said to someone, by someone, at the age of 13 years or 14 or 15 years, in case that love may not be the real love, that is the love to the physical beauty. Right? So that may be lust rather than the love. So there can be slowly and slowly we get into the real meaning of the love. That's what I'm telling you. Things keeps on changing. The meaning of that of the love for 15 years, boy or girl, vis-a-vis -vis of 20 years, vis-a-vis -vis of 25, 30 or 40 years, they differ. Same is true as far as our habit is concerned because we keep on changing, the environment keep on changing, as far as our need is keep on changing. In case, for example, today I'm alone, there is a family, then there's something wrong in the family. So you see, every mo moment we keep on changing. So I have written this book with that sort of perspective that you have everything from this. Of course, uh, I have to, this, this uh, book can never uh, uh, fulfill all uh, whatsoever is required. I have tried to touch the various chapter, but still it has uh, become something like uh, around uh, 580 to 600 pages, which is there in two volumes. And uh, they have uh, 14 chapters and uh, very nicely and carefully written. You see, it's not a casual reading. And I have told you that uh, there has to be little uh, uh, good attention concentration. But at the same time, it is a fast race. People want just uh, everything uh, in no time and uh, the best value. Like uh, coal engine was not best value because input was 100%, output was only 10%. But as far as uh, the present day population, and why not? In case something is be, uh, available uh, for a, a good cost and is achievable in a rather short time, why not to buy that? Why not to focus that? Time is again a money. Time is very, very important. But at the same time, I would say that uh, people are uh, nowadays, everyone, each and everyone, not only in India, but everywhere in the whole of the world, they are more addicted to the telephone. They are more addicted to the digital phone, maybe the uh, games or maybe uh, 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 see, watching some sort of uh, uh, other videos or uh, 
may be busy in just uh, decorating their own ego by sending WhatsApp or uh, certain cut piece sort of things. Once they are having, uh, I, I will not say they are wasting their time, they are enjoying, they are having fun. So let them have fun. But is that fun or the usefulness is going to be everlasting, healthy? No, it is not. You are going to become a couch potato. The metabolic syndrome is going to be there. Weight gain is going to be there. There are a lot many diseases which are going to come in. High blood pressure, diabetes, then cholesterol abnormalities, heart attack, brain attack. They are becoming more and more common. You see the obesity is one of the very common problem as far as the America is concerned. Now, as far as the depression is concerned, anxiety disorder or stress is concerned, this is again, they are increasing. I asked one of my contemporary who is uh, 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 director of neurology in Swansea University in UK. How many patients you see which is uh, neurology vis-a-vis -vis the psychiatry? He said 50%. See over there also again you know people really don't uh, appreciate that neurology is different and uh, psychiatry is different. Over there also a person who is having psychosomatic disorder means the problem the basic problem is with the psyche. But soma means body. When they may come that they, I'm having some pain or I'm not hearing properly or there are so, so many other things, right? So I have tried to give all sort of exposition as far as uh, uh, this uh, uh, book is concerned so that you can choose, you can know the in-depth story. It is not definitely no one can go to the cause of the cause of the cause. But to a reasonable extent by virtue of my passion and the, in the way I have told, one can go into the root level. And one can uh, plow it, one can garnish it, and uh, one can make the best possible pruning and uh, why not uh, uh, doing watering or uh, plowing in a nice time, a nice place, in the nice way, to your individualistic way. You can uh, definitely make that. Over and above, I will say that uh, one, one needs a stress buster. We never know. No one knows. That we are going, we are having a good life and we are going on the road nicely and somebody hits us. We have uh, some unwanted fractures or some sort of other challenges as far as the health is concerned. Or there may be some challenges as far as the finance is concerned. There may be some challenge as far as uh, the um, uh, ego is concerned. Somebody may be just put in, in, in the jail or uh, there may be some sort of uh, other issues which may be linked with self or surrounding or there may be natural calamities. We are seeing you see, the corona has just gone. Next in pipeline was Ukraine-Russian war. So uh, each and everyone is affected directly or indirectly. So we don't know what next. There can be natural calamities, there can be flood, floods, there can be tornado, there can be so many other things. So uncalled for, the things keeps on challenging each and every one of us. So we have to develop a lot of reserve, a sort of stress reserve. We have to find some alternative ways, routes. And that's what is given in this book. Right, sir. Definitely, sir. I think from the little experience that I have with the patients, I can say that when they know the mechanism of something, or some disorder they are having, it's really easy for them to implement the ways that we provide them. We help them find out. So having read your book also, um, I think definitely it talks about very basic things. Uh, sir has written in a very simple language, in a very subtle language, uh, it explains, this book explains the basic mechanisms of how brain works, how uh, anxiety, uh, you know, impacts us or for that matter, other problems also. So I'm definitely and I'm really sure, sir, that viewers, uh, the readers, they will be very benefited, uh, you know, uh, reading this book. Yeah. Thank you, so I must add one thing. See, I, I was talking of uh, the fast reading and uh, because uh, it's a little uh, uh, reading which needs attention concentration. But in addition to that, to make the things little easy, mm -hmm. I have added 150 diagrams in this. Okay. The diagrams really speaks of a big thing. In case a person just go through the diagram only, I'll say about 50 percent, that's a sort of gist as far as this book is concerned. 50 percent of uh, the knowledge can be gathered from the 150 diagrams only. So that's also one of the rich thing which uh, one may not find uh, that oftenly as far as these sort of uh, books are concerned. Uh, so sir, next I would like to know, uh, when you start writing this book, who do you think you were writing it for? Who's the target population? And is this book worth buying? Yeah. Is yeah. it provide value <laughs> for money? <laughs> no, these are very important. And uh, this should be uh, one of a very 
thing of uh, concern. See, uh, of course, there is no free lunch, but at the same time, I'll say uh, it's nothing like uh, it's. It has been uh, costing big, big amount of money. Nothing like that. It is going to be available in the printed form, paperback form, as well as this is going to be available on the digital form, uh, Amazon, uh, maybe Kindle, or maybe in certain other forms also as the time uh, goes in. Uh, uh, one of the very important question which you have asked is the target population. See, my target population is definitely not tubular. It's vast. So that's what uh, I am for. Open heart, open mind, and open arms. So basically, I want to include as many persons as available. Of course, those persons who are, uh, uh, let's say, gray, um, this is for something like late 20s years of age or uh, more than uh, 20 or uh, 30s. But this is good enough for everyone. More good for those who are having different sort of uh, psychological problem, behavioral issues, or there is uh, lifestyle uh, problems. Present the lifestyle problems are running. They just keep running to you, keep on coming day in and out. You solve one, second is just uh, in the pipeline. So the, those things are important. So the, the, with that sort of thing, I have uh, thought of uh, the population, especially the youngsters. I want the the, the, the ladies, uh, the the uh, younger girls, and uh, but then they must have uh, education something like plus two, so around graduate, a little less than graduate or more than graduate. And but this is surely very good as far as the target population is concerned. It is not uh, dedicated or uh, purely linked with that uh, in any way linked with the um, paramedics or for the doctors or for uh, these uh, psychologists. This is a book for the general public. So, but this is going to be of immense use because this is having a scientific uh, background. So I, I'm not, uh, um, of course, I have added my 58 years of experience, but the total story is the, as far as the substratum is concerned, as far as the foundation of this book is concerned, that is purely based on real science. So this is going to be useful as far as the uh, neuroscientist is concerned because basically this uh, inculcate uh, a, a nice mix of uh, neuroscience, neurology, behavior neurology, neuroelective physiology, psychology, and of course, spiritualism and uh, uh, philosophy. So those persons who are deep thinker, it's going to, um, uh, going to be real good use. And uh, as far as uh, uh, um, those person who wish to uh, make something out of it, maybe neuroscientist or psychologist, they can also have a lot of things which can uh, have from this. But by and large, my vision is uh, for the uh, general population uh, world over. It's nothing like, it doesn't have anything like uh, religion and uh, because I don't want to create some sort of controversy. This is pure, simple fact, which is truth, nothing but truth and useful. There's nothing like, uh, which I have uh, uh, inculcated or produced from my own self or from my uh, my own uh, perspective or narrative, nothing, nothing like that. It is all the experience, uh, pure experience over and above the pure science, which is available. This is fundamentally a scientific book written on the, uh, the byproduct of uh, changing the ever challenging uh, lifestyle which is uh, um, becoming more and more difficult and getting uh, more and more difficult. You see, uh, our relationship is concerned, our uh, concerned uh, with the, each other is concerned. Because ultimately, let's say, uh, having name, fame, acquisition, and uh, uh, money, and uh, what not. What is the basic thing, uh, what is required for? That is the happiness. Happiness is a journey. It is uh, not, uh, not actually the ever-sustained happiness. Happiness is only transient. Enjoy, which takes the help of the joy. So happiness, enjoy, joy, and thereafter the blessed, but ever sustained happiness. So we want not a transient happiness, let's say working on the some sort of uh, games uh, in the, but we want a ever sustained happiness today and in the coming time, despite of facing the various type of challenges ahead. So of course the challenges are going to uh, create problem. Let's suppose the, the problem is, that hit hard is 80%. And by reading this book and practicing this book, and this becomes to from 80% to 20% or 10%. So I think it's a worth devoting your time, worth devoting your money, 
and uh, because i'll say more important is your time rather than your money because time nowadays is one of the very important things yeah. thank you so much sir uh, one thing i want to know yeah. how did you feel how was your experience of writing the book so far Yes, it was tough. <laughs> I, I, I'll be, uh, uh, of course, at my age, uh, it was of course a challenge writing this sort of book. Um, frankly speaking, uh, I'm working on this book for the last two years, mm -hmm. and uh, it's my habit, a bad habit. I stretch my time, mm -hmm. stretch my time by virtue of my compassion obsessions, maybe over and above uh, working for five to six hours uh, on the patient care. I'm almost 10 hours on this book for the last two years. So uh, I wanted to share the best possible. But of course, there are going to be ifs and buts. As I said, I am too small if fry. As for the total consciousness is concerned, I'm just a very small consciousness. And I've written everything in this book. You talk of energy, you talk of matter, you talk of philosophy, you talk of consciousness, you talk of uh, um, um, these um, uh, universe, multiverse, you talk of sun, you talk of energy. You, you, you think of a thing, you are going to find uh, some sort of reference over here and a useful reference and linked with your daily living. So in that way, I will say that uh, uh, this was a challenge for me and uh, but uh, I have tried to give my best possible from my perspective and I hope that this is going to be good as far as the reader perspective is concerned. I must add, I will add because I am one of you, maybe li with little more experience, make, make me complete. So I would like to have your uh, sincere uh, criticism and uh, of course comments and addition subsection also and suggestions also because things continue. We are in a flow. We, we, we are uh, just creating some waves in the ocean. They are transient. They are created and they just get into the ocean itself. So I'm like that, like you guys. So why not come forward, make me correct, make me to face little more challenge, even at this age. I don't mind. I'll accept it in a positive way. has mentioned previously that learning is a two-way thing so yeah. definitely I think sir viewers and myself we learn a lot from this book yeah. and definitely we will provide you feedback also hopefully yeah, yeah. right Thank yeah you but so that much. yeah that will be available on my website as well as on uh, uh, some uh, other digital media form so you you can give me your uh, this maybe on the email or uh, some uh, other uh, other uh, virtues and make me aware that this is a shortcoming and uh, th this is not acceptable. Uh, but I have not written from my side anything which is controversial. It is plain truth. Right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Mm. Thank you for introducing mm. this book to us. Yeah, thank yeah. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you, viewers. All the best. So, be a uh, player as well as a coach. So, that's my final advice to you. Try, try this book once at least. And a good, once good reading is surely going to be useful to each one of you. All the very best. Uh, so uh, we uh, interviewed Dr. Bansal about his book. And I'm sure uh, from whatever parts I have read that this book is going to help all the readers irrespective of the age. Obviously, sir has mentioned about the education qualification. At least 10 plus 2 should be there. But... Uh, Irrespective of your gender, your age, what you do, this book is definitely going to help you out, understand yourself. The contents that have been covered in this book, ranging from brain, basics of brain, then how your perception is formed, how your memory works, how your entire brain works, how is the emotional system of our human body, the spirituality, the psychology, the existence of human, uh, human. So this, all the chapters, all the contents that have been covered in this book, they are going to provide us with the very basics of our own existence. And they are going to help us understand and better manage ourselves. So I can definitely say that this is a very good self-help book that is going to benefit the society as a whole. And sir, Dr. Bansal, he has put his entire wisdom uh, his experience, the learning of last 52 or maybe more than year, more than 
52 years of age. So I would really recommend everyone to read this book. Being a professional uh, into this field of psychology, I really like this book and I would like everyone to read this book to know more or know better about yourself.